My name is Robert Day. Uh, I came to Canada to take my Master of Science degree uh, at the University of New Brunswick and I got a Beaverick scholarship to do it. That was a miracle <laughs> for me. Uh, I had to go to Fleet Street to the Daily Express offices for the interview for the scholarship and uh, it, it went pretty well. There was, uh, I think he's John William Maxwell Aitken, the son. There was a Canadian consul and a third person who I don't know and they were asking me about my academic performance, but I'd already had to send, I think, what was more or less a transcript they must have known. And uh, then they asked me what sports I played, and I told them I played for the Oxford University Blues, which is a famous Oxford University hockey team, ice hockey team, that's existed since about 1855. And, and they were sort of, there was a dead silence. And then they turned to me and they said, is it ice hockey or field hockey? I said, ice hockey. I had that feeling, maybe I'm getting the scholarship. <laughs> so it had nothing maybe to do with academic performance. It probably had to do with sports, as it often does. <laughs> then the very interesting thing happened. Uh, uh, Max Aiken, the son, asked me, um, what, does your pet, what, do, what does your father do? And I said, well, he teaches uh, forest pathology at Oxford University, okay. And, uh, and he said, and you're following in, in his footsteps? And I said, well, I, I, not, I don't think I'm into pathology. I'm into silviculture. And, and, and uh, the, the interesting part about it was Max Aiken said, I have a father that's in this business, and I don't know if I want to be in it. <laughs> I went home, got back there, still didn't know if I had a scholarship, got, a, I think, a telegram from London saying, Lord Beaverbrook would like to meet you, report to Arlington House off the Strand, that's three o'clock in the afternoon, okay. Do I continue with this? <laughs> okay, well, I went. I had to buy a pair of new shoes. My mother said, your shoes look terrible. And uh, I went to the Strand, found, found the apartment, rang the bell, waited and waited and waited, and Raymond came to the door, okay. And when he came to the door, he showed me into this vast room. Uh, you could call it a living room or a drawing room. It must have had 15 sofas on it, all covered with pictures, okay. So I sat down and uh, waited and waited, and finally this little bald-headed man came into the room and walked up and down looking at the pictures. He finally came to me and he said, who the hell are you? Well, I'd been in the army. I didn't take that kind of thing. I said, well, you tell me who the hell you are first. And he said, I'm Lord Beaverbrook. And I said, oh my God, I've done the wrong thing. So that's when I first met Lord Beaverbrook. Oh, he was a small, very opinionated uh, man. He, he didn't really pay much attention to who the hell you are. Uh, going back to what I was talking about a second ago, he never told me, well, I said, do, do I have the scholarship? Do I have the fellowship or not? And he said, he didn't tell me. He, he called the Raymond and showed me out. <laughs> However, uh, a week later, I got another message at my home in Oxford. I think again a telegram saying that Lord Beaverbrook would like you to go down to Somerset and spend some time on his dairy farms, okay, which also had old game covers on them that needed converting to high forest. So, so I'm not sure what was going on. Anyway, so I went down and spent a week with Sandy Copeland and his wife at Cricket Mallerby in Somerset. Beaver owned the local dairy. He was producing six flavors of milk and he was re re rehashing all the pastures. He was reseeding, plowing, fertilizing, just like Beaver does when you came off the wretched Somerset country road and bumped onto Lord Beaverbrook's perfectly pr paved roads into the barn, the dairy barns were perfect, everything was perfect, and everybody went around saying, you better not do this, or you better not do that, or you'll have the wrath of the Lord upon you, <laughs> which of course was Lord Beaverbrook. Well, it really is terribly important because without A, playing hockey, and B, meeting Lord Beaverbrook, and apparently impressing him because I did get the scholarship, okay? I, I A, wouldn't have ever come to Canada. I wouldn't have had the money to do it. And, and B, I wouldn't have got my Master of Science degree and take over teaching at the University of New Brunswick from my prof and go on into a career of being a forester on the East Slopes of the Rockies and teaching in two other universities. So, I mean, that's really what it means. It's incredible. It's, it's just incredible, you know? However, he is an interesting man. Can I talk about going down to his house for dinner? He invited all the Beaver scholars. I think John Finley's going to be here, as far as I know. I'm not sure who else will be here, but I'm glad John is going to be here because he can back me up on this story. But 
we were all invited down to his house, and uh, we went in, and he, we, all the English kids were, okay, so, and he, he turned to us and he said, do you smoke, do you smoke, do you smoke? And everybody said, well, no, no. Because John and I, John said, well, Bob and I uh, used to smoke, but now we only smoke cigars. So he called Raymond and made us take two cigars out of what could have been thought of as a humidor. They were absolutely bone dry. And Beaver made us smoke them to the stub, okay, and we were reeling with it. It was awful. We didn't know where to stash them and no plants or anything. Anyway, so we got through and then Raymond called and we went in for dinner. Oh, we didn't, we didn't. I guess we did go in for dinner. And he said, well, we're having planters punch before dinner. So he opened a bottle of rum, poured it into a jug with some ice in it, and then poured all the water, oh no, wait a minute, poured, poured the water off the ice onto the floor, then poured the neat rum into the thing and gave us each about half a glass of rum, pardon me, and said, you bloody Englishman, all you do is drink. <laughs> Whereupon we drank our drinks, and Arnold got so uh, so tight he couldn't hit the soup. So while he was trying to eat this sort of orange-colored soup, it was splashing all around the tablecloth. I mean, that's a beaver. That's how he was.